you know, I'm just worried about you, Dad. You know, I mean, I'm worried about you being too isolated, maybe. That's very sweet, Ben. I mean, you have a... Well, I'm like worried. I'm worried about you in the way a son would worry about a father who was ill-equipped to be a father. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. It was just an observation, a conversation. You almost said a raw observation, which was an interesting <laughs> slip. I did just talk to a guy named Rob. I don't know whether that was why. No, but but I, I'm you know the the fact that, that you are concerned about me is is kind it's kind of a part of your behavior that I thought you were going to say kind. No, it's it's kind of like the just the, kind and then stop. But that's okay. Go keep going. You no, know, it's like the child becoming the parent, which is which is is another. The Japanese do that a lot. <laughs> it's also respecting your elders, which I think is something that, that you do since you were a very young boy. Yeah, I used to respect my youngers too. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess it's just because I guess I feel like in this time, you know, with what's going on, I feel like you're not, you know, you're more isolated than you were. You don't have... Uh, many or any friends what, what would you I think uh, somewhere, in be, somewhere in between many and any <laughs> so just like a long a yeah I mean I have, I have nanny you have nanny friends <laughs> but is that a that is somewhere between many and, and, and none yeah nanny nanny you have nanny friends no, I mean, you have me, but, you know, I'm not always available. I'm always, you know, I'm like, you know, for me, this is a busy time. What do you mean in, in what sense? Well, like I'm, you know, I'm constantly on my cell phone doing stuff. It's, that's, yeah. I mean, you could do that too, I guess. I was just worried about because you're not like, that's not your thing. I worry that you're maybe... No, I, I, I do spend a lot of time on the phone, um, you know, mostly with customer support. <laughs> um, you know, they, what, you know they support, they, that works two ways, customer support, you know. <laughs> they need my support and I need their support. Yeah, sometimes you're too kind. That's, that's too kind of you. <laughs> so I, I, I think, I don't know if that's true, but, but thank you anyway. Well, you could always like develop a hobby late in life. I know, uh, um, I assume someone did that who was famous, you know, who, be, who got, you know, turned that hobby into something. Oh, yeah. I think I it was mean, a, there was a painter who did that, right? Oh, and Her Herman Melville wrote Moby Dick, I think, when like maybe the day before he died. To bear. They're such a large pitch to start to write. He worked, he worked feverishly that day. Yeah. No, it's not so unusual. But... Oh, no, no. I don't know how to make that stop. Did you get a pacemaker? No, no, no. That, that's just. Oh, oh, you had a bun in the oven. Yep. Yep. Another one on the way. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> do you wish that you had a sibling it would be yeah. nice to have one now now that I'm you know at this age yeah have you thought about becoming a foster parent I don't think I qualify <laughs> that's uh, flat feet oh <laughs> yeah I mean I guess uh Maybe we, you know, you, I didn't have a lot of hobbies growing up. Maybe that's because of you too. So maybe you are, uh, you know, just who you are. I can accept but, that. You know, being, being a therapist was not my first choice. You know that. 
you, uh, you, you, you astronaut? No, I want to do uh, to make Venetian blinds. <laughs> oh, is that a turn of the phrase, or did you really want to make? No, I literally want to. Do you know how to how you make a Venetian blind? Um, I I say so I don't know. <laughs> poke his eyes out. Yeah, poke him in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty that's, hard. That's a pretty hard poke. Yeah, that might be. I I think that's the might be the best joke of all time. I don't think so. No. No. I mean, it's like maybe in the top uh, 100. <sighs> well, it's see, that's what, why I worry about, you know, you know, your, your heavy sighs are a lot heavier. So that maybe that's just, I'm just. Yeah. Well, one of the yeah. things that, that, one of the things you're hearing when I sigh is, is my concern about getting this vaccine that's supposed to be available to guys my age. Yeah, how old are you now? Do you do you want to say? I am seventy three years old. Oh, yeah, I might be seventy four. I think I'm seventy four, and I, I have um, what they call comorbidities. They used Don't. to open. They used to open for me the comorbidities. No, no, no. But the, so you know, I'm a good candidate for the vaccine, but it's just very hard to get. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it. I. Well, I mean, of course, I want you to get it too. It would be rude to not want you to get that. Um, I know about the comorbidities. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to get it with you. Yeah. Well. I mean, I get the feeling that, like, you know. Um, if you go in and try and get it, they, they, they might not turn you down. Well, you, know, but it, it, you can only advocate for yourself so much in this situation because... You know, this I mean, it, it does depend on the audition process, I guess. Yeah, if you get a call back. <laughs> but, um, what song have you prepared? He the lonely. No, no, no. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to Yeah, I think you'll get it. But uh, I don't know, but I wish it was some way that uh, that I've even looked for it online for this vaccine, but it's it's almost impossible to find. I know. I know. I mean, if you pay me, I'll go out looking for you. Well, I, you know, I might be willing to do that. Well, I mean, I think like you, you know, you just have to like, you know, you keep you, you keep at it. I guess I'm not a, really good with a pep talk. No. No. It's, in the um, meantime, in the meantime, though, I thought like you know, before you get the vaccine, in order to like, you know, make, give yourself some something to do, you know, in that time. That's why I was suggesting maybe develop some sort of hobby. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh. I like archery. I know that hobbies are hard to, hobbies are hard to come by now, but because I was going to suggest horseback riding, but I know now that's maybe too late for you. And also there's a pandemic going on and I don't know, you could yeah. probably potentially get it horseback riding. But I would love my, like a pony of some kind. I know it's crazy, but or one of these miniature horses. Yes. So, so I would so I wouldn't have to go outside to ride. I don't know if you let them inside. They don't have indoor horses anymore. Uh, no. I could get you a carousel, and you could install it inside the house, and you could ride around it all day. <laughs> and why doesn't that appeal to me? I think I don't know. Seems to it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think it would be fun. Just the music alone, I think, would be something to keep you company. Yeah, maybe. Um, what are you thinking? I'm just thinking about a time when this country faced another off 
awful disease and took it on, took it head on with it, with it. With? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about polio. <laughs> oh, okay. Waiting for it. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I think, I wonder if that would work, you know. If, if you could get me your hands on the polio vaccine, I would, I would try it. Well, I don't think that works for COVID nineteen, but I obviously, if have you not gotten a polio vaccine? No, <laughs> you might have it. Maybe I did when I was a kid. Maybe. <clears throat> oh, Laura. Ben, how did you get in this room? Oh well. Password protected. That what? It's password protected. No. Oh. I mean, my dad sort of helped me out with the computer issues. So, right. plus I'm pretty savvy online. You know that. No, actually, if since I set up this meeting, if I boot you out of it, you automatically get reported to the FBI. I mean, I would love that. I know you would. That's why I, mean, I want to do it. <laughs> I've always wanted to be one of the 10 most wanted. I know. I, w I would. I always thought that you might like sometimes refer to me as one of your most wanted. Yeah, no. Maybe. I mean, yeah, not, no. Anyway, I just wanted to touch base because I was thinking of maybe I'm like doing a new thing now. Right. Uh, that I got really good at really fast. You know, there's not a lot of people who get really good at things really fast late in life, but I guess I'm one of those people. <laughs> um, and uh, it's painting. So I've been painting quite a bit lately. That's, yeah, what are you painting? Are you like, are you painting your like action figures and stuff? <laughs> no, I mean, I do do figure stuff, but I do them all over the place. I do, uh, you know, conceptual, non-conceptual, fruit stills still lifes like a, a lemon with a bottle well i thought i could i thought i could maybe come by and paint you at some point because i that would it makes sense because i feel like the human form is the most important and also i also just so you know i take great care with my work and um i do believe my th whatever my theory in art when I do my art is that the, uh, the, the person who I'm painting is more important than the painter. Yeah. How does that, how do you make that happen? Do you bring gifts? I mean, well, no, I, I it's expressed, it's expressed, it's expressed through the art itself. It's a good thing. So like, what would I have to do? Um, well, you could pose, you know, and I could come by and you pose and I don't know, you hold something and then whatever, it would just be like, and it takes a quite a bit of time. I would, but like sitting for a really long time doing nothing is something that I don't do for free, obviously. Like I do it for a salary. Right. Well, I can come if my, my, that's all taken care of from, by my dad. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's so we could just like work it in. You wouldn't like charge double because I'm there painting you, would you? Well, I mean, that's sort of what I do for work. So I feel like I, I don't want to give it away for free. I, I mean, I asked you to, you know, constantly reinvent your life every day for you know no room and board why am i i'm not sure what you're getting at well i'm just saying whatever it is you do oh you don't pay me i don't ask you to just do it for me yeah i guess in a way my dad pays yeah how do you pay how do I... oh like kind of similar I, I like I sit around for my dad and you do nothing I mean I don't know if you do nothing you come up you have new hobbies I mean I might do less than you in general but I don't know I mean I, I well, I've seen the same kind of thing like I, I wouldn't ask you to do that for me for free I would 
I would ask you to, you know, do it just away from me for free for whatever you get. Typically, yeah. typically when you model for an artist, the, you, the model doesn't really get paid. Oh, typically, really? That's what I understand based on my, I read uh, Cezanne biography. Really? Did you read, you probably read several, several books on the subject. Well, I read the beginning of the Cezanne biography. It didn't talk about like, in, like how to pay your models. Right. Okay. Well, do some more research. Maybe write up a report and come back to me with it and we can talk about I it. Yes, but this is like turning down like a probably a fairly, a potentially huge investment in my art in general. Like you a lot. The painting, at least. Sometimes artists would gift their work to their models, you know, as a You would just give me the painting wasn't very good, be honest. If it was really good, you'd want to keep it. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't painted actually a, a person yet. Right. So you would be the first, which would be something special. Okay. Well, maybe like after the pandemic and like if I change the way I feel about you radically. You know? I mean, there's a way to do it during the pandemic, too. I could set up outside your window and paint you. I think that would be romantic. You know what happens when you do that. You get reported to the FBI. Which I said I wanted. Which you said you wanted, which was uh, hard for me to do because I didn't want to give you what you wanted. But, but I mean, they're not going to arrest an artist. On that one. All right. I mean, if you're saying no, I guess that's fine too, but you're passing up. No. no, I mean, everyone is really so, you know, there's something about this pandemic. It just makes you have feeling, you know, some sort of human feelings for other people. Yeah. And that's how I express that in my art. Through your art. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, Sorry. I spend a lot of time calling it your art. Hey, Laura. Yeah. Can you connect uh, Dom so I, yes. I can talk to him? Thank you. Okay. Okay, bye. Um, okay. I don't see. Oh, you know what? I think you need to get closer to your mic because I can't hear you that well and you don't want your patients to not hear you. Oh, is this is this better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Hey, Dom. Dr. Katz, I think I'm falling hard for Dr. Katz. And even though I know, but it ain't right every night. It's him and me in my dreams. In my dreams. Hello, Dr. Dom? Katz. You know that you are the only patient mm -hmm. after maybe, I don't know, almost 30 years of being a therapist. Wow. You, you think you're better at it by now? Well, I'm getting better. You know, this this was not my dream job. You know that. What was it? I wanted to. Are you laughing at yourself, Doctor? You're going to waste no. my time like this? I already paid that bitch. She just had a problem for the money. Now, I wanted to make Venetian blinds when I, when I first. Well, who doesn't, for, for the love of God? You, you know how you make a Venetian blind, don't you? I, th I don't think so, but I think a, 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 there's a, a punk, punk jam. Punk, never mind. You poke them in the eye. Poke them in the You No, you poke them in the eye. Oh, you poke them in the eye. Uh, yeah. Where you see the root of root with Dana Reed. And my other brother, no, but my cousin, other teacher, that's one of the characters I do now. What do you think? I, I, if it works, I ain't begotten no weapon. Huh? Yeah. I'm with you. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Yeah. You look good. Great. The, the, the glasses fit well. It's a good color for you. Blue. Yeah, it's, it's royal blue. Well, excuse me. Yeah. I that didn't sounds, know. Oh, no. sorry, you hear that, everybody? It's royal blue. Kiss hey, my body, mother. Dom, tell me, tell me how are you doing with this pandemic? I mean, what what is... What yeah, is I heard like him talking about the pandemic. What, what is this? Uh, does he say Panasonic? Pandemic. Oh, the thing with the virus? That's a bunch yeah. of bullshit. Oh, my God. You're one of these... 
I don't believe it. These people just happen to die, and they're going to blame it on this poor little virus. Still tiny, you can't even see. Son of a bitch. Well, I hope you're taking care of yourself. It really, it's an awful disease. Oh, yes. I'm wearing a butt plug right now, just in case. I don't want anything to, to enter my body unless it's through the front. Why is that funny? I'm, I'm giving my life my, 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 then, then you, you, you turn like I'm, this. I'm not laughing at you. I'm, I'm laughing. I'm, I'm trying to be supportive. You know, this is all I have done. This is all I have. I'm not like you, some fancy, uh, I'm not going to say the word Jewish doctor. What is something that, that came out of left field, a Jewish doctor. <laughs> Next thing you know, they'll become dentist again. I don't understand me, sir. It took you so long to say the word you didn't want to say. Like, a, like less than five seconds. Well, I, I said I did. Yeah. You said, I don't want to say the word. And then there it is. Things like that happen. Isn't it funny about life? How sometimes things come unexpected and other times they come expected. Yeah. Are you with me? I'm with you. Let's go lay down somewhere, put bathing suits on with a couple of boiled potatoes down the front and relax. Tom, that's not such a crazy idea. It's a, it's a, it doesn't make sense in, in this context of, of therapy. I'm going to bark for a second. <laughs> Good. What are you saying? I was saying... <laughs> Why is this fun? I don't understand. I come here <laughs> trying... You oh. got a boo-boo. Tom, you got a boo-boo. Why did you bark? Sometimes you just got to bark at things in life. Yeah. That's what my, my mother used to say. But she was a whore anyway. Never cared for that woman. And my what grandmother, 42 what your, obese. What about your dad? What was, what was your relationship? You had to bring that up, huh? You had to bring it. You, you, you know how to dig. I'm not, I'm not trying to dig. Home when I was in second grade. He never cheated on my mother. He used to cheat on me. Pick up other kids after school. Take them to the zoo. Take them to play ball. One day he came and he says, look, I got to level with you. I met another kid. For the first time in my life, I feel like a real father. Jesus, that is, that is brutal, Dom. I'm so sorry you had to live through that as a, as a my child. Mother stood, my mother stood by me. She says, I can't talk about it, but this interpretive dance might let you know how I feel. Okay. Rico, play the music. Oh, you left. <laughs> Lazy, you know what? How much time I got left? Tom, you're a young man. You probably you probably have another 30 years left, I would say. I'm a young buck. Uh, yeah, I think if I eat right, I exercise, I got about another two weeks. No, Tom, you're, hey. you're in good shape. Look how I'm fat not... my head has gotten. Remember what a nice slim head I had in the old day, back in the back of the day? Hey, you and me hanging hey. in the corner. Wait, where does your head start? It starts at the nape of my neck. And then it goes... I, like, I, I, I use the N-word when I say that. Na nap. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an N-word? Yes. That's enough of that. Let's not push it. <laughs> no, my, my N-word is... You get in trouble with the NCAA. No, and my N-word is negativity. That's so I beautiful. Think, I see so much negativity in you, Dom Irera. And I wish I wish I could turn that around. I wish I could. So many years you've been my patient, and it just can't get to the joy in your life. Well, you've you taught know? me not what not to do. Like, listen to people and all their bullshit. Well, that's important. You have a gift, Doctor. You have a gift. Why do you think I come back here every week? Why? To see you, yeah, Laura. She looks great, Laura. She, yes, she, she gained height. She's a very tall woman. She's she, 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 giant, <laughs> Laura. Look, Godzilla, Laura, same size. See, that was my uh, sushi accent. Yeah. Look at that there, smart pants. What kind of underwear you have on? I smell something bad. Mmm. Ooh. Tom Herrera, you, I, I don't know, just where your mind goes, it's so mysterious to me. I just, I'm, I'm not, 
I don't think like you. I don't think as quickly as you. And, I, and even if I could, my you mind would go to different places. Well, you know, you have a gift too. I mean, you have a gift of making people come back to a place where they get shitty advice, but you give them a discount. The crappy advice discount. No, I, you know, if, if you would like my help, I'm available, but it seems like you come here just not not so much for therapy. You come here because you enjoy my company, and is that correct? Well, you might say that, or you might say something else. But I'll tell you this, Doctor. Mark my words. You'll <laughs> see someday. Someday I'll be leader of this whole Viceroy or Vices, new whatever Panasonic magazine thing. And let me tell you another thing, some Doctor Katz. If that in fact is your real name. Isn't it true on the night of January 3rd, you and Elliot Nez, there's a reference for you. Yeah. How you feeling, Doc? No, I, I feel okay, as long as you don't count my body, you know? Okay, I count that out. Your spirit, your spirit is okay. Oh, my, my, yeah, I feel good. My mind is very sharp. Ask me anything. Uh, well, how, what's the speed of sound? I think it's 700 miles an hour, Doc. How about light? Faster. How, how about my ass? What's the what's the speed of my ass? My uncle Tony always just said that. I ain't done Uncle Tony. I am all right, but my ass. I don't know. Yeah. I come from did, a very strange family. Did, didn't you have a cousin who used to? He almost asked you to to hurt him some hurt him in some way. He would ask you questions. You loved them, but they, they would. To answer them would be hurtful, I think. Does my head look big, big to you? He would say stuff like that. Yeah, that's okay. He put me down. He says about comedy. He goes, I could be a comedian. I'm just not funny, you know, like in front of people. But that's the whole gist of being a comedian. Just, I don't think that. Stop the, stop the tape. <laughs> yeah, the, you haven't used the word gist since I've known you. Or jit. Jit yeah. and gist are completely different things. Yeah. Jit, I find to be much stick, stickier than gist. Yeah. Uh huh. Come on. Who's your Who's your baby? Who's your bouncer baby boy? That would be you, Dan. That would be me. Yep. I'd give it all just for one night, me and you, on water skis, little tiny thongs, just seeing our cakes. Muscular. I'm getting hungry. You. Yeah. I, I would I'm, not hungry, kill, I'm like snackish, peckish. Yeah, I would kill for a hot dog with mustard and sauerkraut. What would I you do? And I, I'm not, I don't mean that literally. I wouldn't kill somebody. Right. But I'm, I would very much enjoy having one. Um, Why don't we do that together after the, the, the session? Well, I, I could do that. Or, or we could just get a slice somewhere. Slice so you know it's like a, like a slice of my ass. How about that? Nice big thick slice of my ass. I can't stop saying that. Yeah. You know, the next time you have the urge to say that, say something beautiful instead. Okay. <laughs> Your sister's fat ass. How about that? That's beautiful. Yeah. Dom, I'm, I'm so disappointed in, in both of us at this moment. Just... In oh no, you should, I'm doing fine. You the one you should be disappointed about yourself. No, don't say that then, please. I, I kid because I care. If I didn't care, I wouldn't kid. No. Oh Lord. Oh um, sorry, I didn't mean to get you nappish, Doug. Well Hey. You hear that? It's the song. That? Yeah. It's the music. That means what it takes the hardest times you could imagine. And sleep is the only freedom. Let's okay. do the entire score of Fiddler on the Roof, huh? Me and you, let's take it to the ridge. I'm so sorry, we're gonna have to stop now, down. But okay. next week, we'll begin with the Fiddler. Ah, uh, blessing on your head, Mazel Tov, Dr. Katz. Nice to see you again. See you, down. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I um, I I don't. I have my copay. Oh. It, that's gonna be a 
Oh, you have it? Yeah, but, well, I'll mail it. Okay, okay. You, I'll just take it. Oh, oh, oh. You can Venmo me. Venmo, yes. That's yeah. what I should do. And I'm sorry, I, I put my, uh, my ring lights in my glasses. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're perfect. You're okay, perfect. okay. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, would you like to go in and see Dr. Katz now? Maybe? I would love to. I just feel like I've, I've done, I've had some growth. I've had some girls. Okay, this you can save that for when you talk to him. No, of course I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell you all oh, about my marriage or my mom dying. You know, to you because that's not you don't you don't have the the qualifications. But I mean, beyond being a fellow human being, you know. Yeah, yeah, which is negligible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. the, the interest level. Yeah. No, I know. I know. Oh, that's yeah. I it's, can barely uh, pay attention to what I'm saying I'll start over. <laughs> I'll start Maria, over. Maria, the, Maria the Kid Bamford? There you go. Yes, yes, hello, Dr. It's so wonderful to see you. I'm so glad you came by today. It's been a while. Thank you so much for, for, for making the time for me. I know you've had a, you have a pretty tight schedule and it, I was lucky to get in, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm um, just... I'm embarrassingly available, Maria, but I appreciate you, you thinking that. But uh, so much has happened between now and, and the last time I saw you in your life. That much I know. Just yes, yes. The um, conversations we had on the phone, and it's just so painful. Yeah, a lot of uh, you know. But I, I'm trying to comfort myself uh, mostly with children's literature that I find in little libraries. Um, I don't know if you've read anything in the child literature genre lately, but it is so, it's just so simple. You know, it's like a pig family and there's a big brother pig and a baby brother pig and they go to skew and it's first day to skew. Like there's no, there's no backstory, you know, there's no like the, the cat, you know, not only is it a baker, you know, but you know, like the, have you seen Richard Scary where they, they have like a, a tableau of all these anthropomorphized animals. And you know, the have a cat, it says Baker right next to him. But if you don't read, he's wearing a puffy white hat, he's cool. apron, he's holding a steaming bun. You get it. And there's a mouse, is a cop. And he's that's so tiny. And that's what makes it hilarious because there's a figure of authority, but he's chasing an alligator who's driving a taxi. Oh, and the alligator is about to hit a fruit stand. Oh no, apples and bananas everywhere in the crock cab. What I adore about these stories, there's no more realistic backstory. Like the cat actually inherited that business. Um, second generation immigrant. Uh, he, his parents loved, had a love of food and, uh, and people, uh, but he's more of an introvert and he does this flute jazz thing. He shot a video. Anyways, he'll tell you about it for sure. I sell CDs Maria, at the front. Yeah. Maria, do you understand Anything about uh, construction? I, well, I understand that what happens is someone comes to your house and they say, mm, I, I don't know about this. And then because, they say a number. Because everything I know about construction, I learned from reading the story of the three little pigs. Just, that's all you need to know, really. It's, if, it's if you're pig, a homo. Yeah brick the only thing i'll do it'll, it'll chip maybe but yeah. uh unless yeah. somebody tries to sell you aluminum siding then <laughs> you might you might buy that we don't want to have a straw house i think about the three choices straw yeah. straw yes there's the straw there was the uh was there a clay model no clay would have made it yeah. um but yeah i just i love because i feel like i could be a part of that literature world and feel comfortable, you know, like I'd be a bear who, you know, I would say comedian right next to me. But if you didn't read, wearing a giant bow tie, I'd have a plastic flower squirt from the water out of my lapel. In that situation, nobody asks, is she any good? She's the comedian. She makes the whole fucking town laugh. It's just so. And a bear. And a, and a bear. <sighs> You're just not questioned about what you are in children's yeah. literature. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I. But otherwise, yeah. How, how have you been doing? You're married as well, right? I am. I I, I got married about it's almost seven years ago now, yeah. and uh, I wanted to tell you this. It, we found out a year ago that we both have a hobby in common, my husband Scott and I, uh, that we started around the same age, around nine years old, and that is longing for death, uh, suicidal ideation. It's, uh, it's a real clock eater. Um, it passes the time, and uh, so... Is it something you can do together? Oh, yes. We were having a terrible day the other day, both of us individually for different reasons. And I said, hey, what are you thinking about? And he said, what are you thinking about? Nothing good. Uh, but don't worry about us. Don't worry. We have a signed document that we put in, that we had uh, verified by our couples therapist, Carol Grisham, that promises we will not commit suicide. Uh, so, you know, we are, uh, we're good. It's, it's in a magnetic chip clip on the refrigerator. So if you go, come over. You know that we're okay. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like a safe word in in um, people who participate in the world of S and M. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do, do, do No. You have no. Is your safe word or? Oh no no. No, you don't have one. I don't. I don't have a safe word because I don't, I don't participate in that world. Oh. But just from things I've seen in the movies or, or read about well uh, sensuality doesn't it doesn't always have to be intercourse you know it can be in a touch or a kiss yeah. or a well, motivational sticker yeah uh, this is something that's been keeping me really you know to just recognize the work i am doing with motivational oh. sticker and say hey Wait. i'm giving myself positive self-talk even if i don't hear it outside myself you know that's so important i in what way does that sticker help though is that are you rewarding yourself in some way yeah yeah it's self-soothing if you didn't learn it as a child um it's an important thing of being a human being to be able to calm yourself down and say hey uh, in this moment, yes, I'm 50 years old. Uh, yes, I'm on a Zoom show. Uh, and I assume, well, it's, I, it's a therapeutic session that's being live broadcast. And, right. and I'm okay. I'm okay? Yeah. Oh, you, you are okay, Maria. I, I did... Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's so, for you. Yeah. You. So you know you're doing yeah. well. Anyways, I don't need to constantly be showboating how uh, how high my self-esteem is. In some way competing with your sister by doing stuff like that? Of course I am. Uh, I've I've lost. Uh, I, th I think it, that's very clear. Uh, she's an incredible person. She has four beautiful children. She has a genuine community that she participates in. Um, I mostly mm -hmm. contact people through invoicing and uh, otherwise have difficulty making eye contact. Well, you can't compete with that, Maria. No. I, I, no. I have a sister with whom I'm, I'm competitive. Um, should she's, I be seeing her instead? No, 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 no. She's not. She's not a therapist. It's just okay. She's two and a half years older than me. Sure. So it's that is a dynamic that hasn't really changed now that we're older. Yep. Yep. I hear that. Yep. When we were kids, my <laughs> sister. I don't want to, this is, this is your time. You're paying for the time. Well, and the other thing I want to tell you, my mom did pass away and um, she to is, how's that going? Well, oh, it's sorry. awful. Right, uh, no, it's going terribly. Um, 
Now, the real tragedy is that she loved life. She was a real fan. Um, if I may do a quick impersonation, which will hopefully I'll bleed out of doing over the next several years. Okay. Honey, I met this guy in the elevator and it was just crazy. I said, well, what's your name? And because you look so familiar, he says, no, I don't know you. And he, I said, yes, I, I do know you. And then he said, no, I'm sorry, you don't look. And then I said, yes, I do. And then he says, no, you don't. And then we just laughed. My mom left, love life so much. Uh, yet I have been on the fence about it for so many years and she was taken out of the game and I just feel uh, that's terrible. But Here's something. She left us behind. My father, uh, he was decluttering the house uh, about three hours after she had passed. And Wait, brought what was the, Yes. What was the word you used before the house? What was he doing to the house? Decluttering. Oh, decluttering. Okay. Decluttering. Yeah, uh, I think that can be a sign of, of grief is just to kind of pack it up uh, and send it to to Goodwill, but he thoughtfully brought myself and my sister a shoebox, opened it up, said <clears throat> she would have wanted you girls to have these. And it was a large purple plastic dildo uh, vibrator and then a butterfly style vibrator, uh, pink. Um, and I don't, I don't think she would have wanted us to have those. But the great thing is, is, uh, I, yeah, I would have wanted them because they're very expensive. Those, are, those run about 80 bucks, maybe 150 if you're going for quality. Uh, my sister tossed them in the recycling bin after saging them and saying an ecumenical prayer. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Wait, is this the same sister that's also a, a shaman? She's also a shaman. I don't like to, I don't bring it up uh, publicly because it is a she's a private private person. Um, okay. But um, yeah, she has got good connections with um, you know all sorts of uh, deities and uh, spirits that I I will never have, and I am clearly jealous. Yeah. So you told me something, when you told me about your mother's passing, which yes. you told me that at that point you admitted to me, and not, not that there's anything shameful about it, is that you believe in reincarnation. Oh, and I, don't, I don't believe I did. That must have been another client. I, is this a writing you, assignment? Maybe I should... <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you told me you were seeing her, that she's going to come back as some kind of inanimate, inanimate object. Oh, yes. I do look for signs of her. You are correct. Sometimes my husband, we saw, um, it was like a Halloween uh, celebration where someone had put just on a log, had strapped a white plastic bag on it with a, a jack lantern face. And right. I thought, that's her. Mom. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be where you don't expect it because she was very much into design. She was a woman who wore Eileen Fisher separates only and black and muted colors. And then with a, a wow piece, you got to wear three wows, uh, Jonathan. I don't know if you realize that. Uh, I'm wearing I, one, two. Oh, I need one more wow. Isn't, is Eileen Fisher kind of a high end? High-end uh, leisure, but power woman. You can wear, uh, it's tunic length tops, uh, very soft bamboo, I think uh, made in America or at least made with someone thinking about the people who are making them. There's, there's some acknowledgement of human suffering. Aisha, it sounds like the kind of uh, clothing my wife would like. I think, she, well, and if your wife loves a giant gesture necklace, uh, it can provide a, a clean palette because they don't have patterns. It's black, it's navy blue, it's uh, uh, cerulean green. Is that it? Is that the name? I don't know. I want to know the name. Mm -hmm. Cerulean blue. I'm sure the chat is blowing up right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
no, 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 no. We're just getting started. No, no, I no. It's it's fine. It's so fine. I, I have so many of my twelve step groups to go to. I've got like four uh, meetings tonight, back to back, and that's like four. Next time we want to talk about the really awful thing that's happening here. Yeah. Is course. that your 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 dad is dating it? But we'll come back back to that one. And it's. It's fine. She's super nice. He met somebody a, a month later, and um, they're snuggling. It's I'm, I'm very happy to them actually, but yeah, okay, I keep calling her mother. Oh no! <laughs> Hearing this, sorry. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I, I respect your time. I respect your time. I don't want to be a time debtor. <laughs> That's the thing. No. Okay. Well, I'll see you next week. How are you? How are you doing? Oh, hey. Oh, are you talking to me? Yeah, I was talking to you. What's what's going on? Oh, I mean, really nothing. I am. Um, this is the um, the really unnecessary virtual antechamber to telemedicine, and I'm just here to, I guess, make you feel comfortable in some way. Have you been watching those? What do you do? You get into that room raider thing where they rate the rooms. I ha I don't know of that. I don't know what. Well, they rate the rooms, you know, and like so. I would I'll rate your room if you want. Oh, rate. Yeah. Rate the room. But you thought I said rape the room? No, I, I did not think you said that. I thought you said raid raid the room. Raid the room. Oh, no, like rate. In the room. Rate. So I'd, I'd give your, um, I, my room, I like yours. Yours has kind of like, uh, yours is like if there was a Zoom meeting on Mad Men, you, you kind of ha have that feel to it, right? Elegant, sophisticated. It's kind of, I like the light switch. Oh yeah, the light switch is everything. It makes That's the fake, room. right? It makes the room, yeah, it, you just stick it on. I, my room is kind of, uh, I missed going out to dinner, so I bought a steakhouse. And I just, and I also wanted an area to put all the awards I've won. Right. So I haven't won any. I'm just waiting. Well, it's, yeah. good, it's good to want That's things. That's not on the shelf or anything. It's good, it's good to have dreams. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I can connect you to Dr. Katz now. If you, you know, know. Um, how come you don't accept my friend request on uh, the oh, uh, um, the, uh, the job site thing? I really, you really know, couldn't like, be in the room with the two the, of You know, the whole thing. I, I keep sending your, oh, your, your yeah. friend request. Yeah. And yeah. it says you don't get it or it says rejected. And then I think you said stop contacting me. I think you're breaking up. Okay. Dr. Katz? Jim? Can, yeah, can you... I, I don't know if this is inappropriate to bring up, but I feel like your assistant, or is that your, is that my your wife? No, my assistant. Your assistant. I don't know what kind of role playing you do with her, but she was very kind of aggressively hitting on me. Really? Yeah. Well, that certainly not the first time she was she said i remind her of um like a blonde ted cruz yeah apparently that's that good or bad no i think i think uh it's neither hither nor yon yes that's um, what I was thinking. so how are you doing that's cool you want me to rate your background oh yeah please uh uh, it's fake, right? No, this is it's like this a green is, screen, and they put something up there. No, this is the real thing. Everything, all, everything over there, what you can't see, is fake. Right. But behind me, that's the real. That's the real thing in my home. On the other side, there's a big studio audience, right? Yes. Yeah. Um. So, Jim, tell me how is life for you and your family during this I'm doing great I'm doing great I totally um know what I'm gonna do next uh pandemic 
I've just uh, got it all figured out now. Would you say if you had to rate all the pandemics, this is the best? You know, it's it's interesting you bring that up because I know that I get this question a lot. And I would say that this pandemic, um, I put, I'd say that this put the pan in the demic. Oh. Right? Yeah, where it belongs. Right? This yeah. is like, so, I mean, you know, like, you know, of all pandemics, this is probably like, this is like a, it's not even a capital P pandemic. It's just like a pandemic. Lowercase. And I'm case sensitive. Yeah. Um, that might be the only thing I'm really sensitive about, but, but, you know, I noticed when I asked you how you and your family are doing, your answer went directly to you. Didn't, didn't include your kids or your wife. And I don't think, I don't know if that's deliberate or it's just an oversight. Yeah, I, I don't, it's not that I don't care about them. It's just that, um, they're just like, have you ever like had a roommate and then, you know, you, you know, you're not going to renew the lease with them. Do you know what I mean? But you happen to be married to them or their father. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's similar to that. Yeah. But they're, you know, we're doing great. I, like, at what point do you, like, how often are you supposed to shower during a pandemic? Because I know we're we're supposed to conserve water and everything, right? Yeah. I I think that um, one of the luxuries of the pandemic, if you is if you're self conscious about your breath, mm -hmm. not an issue. You know, I'm worried. Like when the pandemic ends, because as of right now, I I you know I'm struggling to return emails. Like I'll read that an email's come in on my, you know, they list them out. You know how yeah. you have your assistant list out emails you've received. Right. I struggle with the part. I used to struggle with responding to emails, and now I struggle with even reading them. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it's not like I'm doing anything else. It's just, I mean, I guess you would call it uh, depression. Maybe. Well, you should see some. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> I, might be, I might be that guy. No, you know, if, if you feel like depression is something you're struggling with, I can certainly uh, prescribe some kind of antidepressant, which is. It's, it's all right. You know, the weird thing is, is like I, you know, what I've done is I've started to drink alcohol at night. And then for like a good 20 minutes, I'm not depressed. But then the next day, the entire day, I'm like depressed. But once I start drinking again, it seems to lift for about 20 minutes. So anyway, I'm on top of it. You okay. I mean? As long as you think you have it under control. It's totally. I mean, it's just there's a lot of bottles of alcohol, empty bottles that... I mean, I have my kids carry them out of the room once a week. You know, when I say hi to them, you know, say hi, you know, the once a week hi. But right. otherwise, uh, you know, it's like I've got everything in control. Do you know what I mean? Is there a particular type of liquor that you prefer? I prefer the free liquor. Sometimes companies will send me alcohol. Oh. That usually is my favorite. Um I try not to do, I used to drink beer, but I, I gained a lot of weight. And, um, but there's this, uh, uh, there's the, um, I like this one brand. It's called Rubbish, Rubbish, Rubbing, Rubbing, Rubbing Alcohol. That's really good. Yeah. I think I it's R-U-B-B-I-N-G. I think it's a French name. Is it, is it a type of vodka or? I don't know. It just says uh, a rubbing, 
uh, alcohol, and then it says don't oh drink. I am so I'm like, and, you know. I'm so slow. It took me so long to get that joke. Yeah, and it's it's such a wonderful joke. It's not bad. It's but it's French. It's a French. I think it's from like Alsace Lorraine area. You know what yeah. I mean? So I used to go out with her. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I will see an awful, see you an awful joke and raise you an awful joke. Yes. Yeah. So um, why are dad jokes can like why are we blamed for uh, uh, bad jokes? I don't know. Did you have a really? dad that told bad jokes? I don't. You know, it's like oh, dad jokes. Oh, that they're bad. Why are dad jokes? Oh, that's bad jokes you know just because we tell bad jokes and we happen to be dads you know why is that bad do you know what i mean it's just another yeah. thing that like you know it's just censorship do you know what i mean yeah. like just if somebody says bad jokes doesn't mean they're bad at jokes no you're right can i tell you one of my, my dad's jokes not really no i don't have time actually <laughs> no, go ahead. No, did he? He he would say, uh, uh, John, did you hear about the fight at the bakery? And you, you say, no, no. The two rolls got fresh. See, but you know what it is? It's like being trapped with my family, family for ten months. I've I've begun to understand why um, the bad jokes are so relished. Is that not only are they so bad that they're humorous, but unlike most comedy that provides enjoyment to other people, the fact that dad jokes um, provide annoyance and pain for your children is the enjoyment. It's it's similar to religion, you know. Yeah. No, I get that. Um... So uh, you last time you prescribed me a bunch of uh, uh, psycho uh, psychotic drugs. Did I really? Yeah. Was, I mean, anti psychotic drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Is that happening in your home? I think so. There's yeah. always some yelling going on. It's just a yeah. measure of the types of yelling. And the intensity. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I'm glad you can't smell me right now. But no, Jim, if I did prescribe antipsychotic medications, that was my mistake. And you should stop taking them and you should throw the rest out because that's, that's not going to help you. Oh, I just, I just took them like before the show because I, I hadn't taken any for like the entire time and I was like oh I don't want to make a mistake so I took them all before I'm sure it's fine yeah. this is like what would happen like when Mr. Gower gave the wrong medication in It's a Wonderful Life it's every year Mr. Gower and right. I'm the guy that got the the pills and you know you're probably going to go to jail from the apothecary yeah, the apothecary, and yeah. That was such a great time. Yeah. Things were so much simpler then. Was yeah. it was was it was it simpler? I feel like it was. You know what I don't understand is why are we live in such an age of conspiracy? Do you know what I mean? Like where conspiracy? I don't know. There's just something I don't trust about it. Do you know what I mean? Like I, mean it, all these, yeah. I feel like a lot of conspiracies are not real. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a coincidence that there's so many conspiracies going on right now. Like it can't all be real. Well, don't you think it's a you know, don't you think it's a strange coincidence that there's so many conspiracies right now? That is. Right? Yeah, that is a coincidence. I think it's a conspiracy, um, actually. Yeah, you Fair know, idea. you know, you know where these all these fringe groups came from. 
the edge. <laughs> they came from the musical Oklahoma. And I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to get that joke. Oh, my gosh. But um, there's a lot of, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of fringe groups. And, like, I don't know what, which group to join. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, what kind of, get what closer kind of and closer to that? absolute chaos. What group should I be in? I don't want to be in a conspiracy group. Because those people, it's just, it's a bad look. Do you know what I mean? It's just... Yeah. And so many of them involve pedophilia. Yeah, a lot. It seems like that's the go-to. Because generally, across the board, people are against that, which is not surprising. People are against death of babies, pedophilia, and eating babies. Not, you know, people are against eating babies. Like, you know, like if someone says, are you against eating babies? Very rarely are you going to be someone's like, I'm on the fence. People are typically against eating babies. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Unless yeah. they're like baby cows, because veal, people love veal, right? Oh, God. Yeah, it's, I mean, I had it, some veal tonight. It was delicious. But yeah. a baby cow, right? You know what I mean? So, like, in some ways, it's going to be so weird when JFK Jr. comes back, right? That's going to be weird. Yeah. What, I'm not what, ready for that. What, what, time, what, what time are you expecting him? I don't know. It's just like, it's going to be just weird. I don't know if he's going to come back and do that George magazine again, or if he's just going to come back and be in charge of the whole uh, Q-averse or whatever. But it's going to be exciting. Jim. Do you think me talking about this is going to get me killed by the Q people? Probably, right? Yes. I'm probably going to yes. get killed, right? <laughs> I think you should stop talking about it now, and I don't know who you are. You know, the thing is, is that would be a great way to go. Like, I'd rather get killed by a Q person than, like, have cardiac arrest in a couple of years. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're going to have to stop anyway, now. I should Thank go. You. I got a meeting. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I love you, Dr. Katz. And I and I and I love you as well, Jim Gaffigan. All right, see you, buddy. Okay. Oh, a medicine. Oh, a tell a medicine. <laughs> hey, Laura. What just happened? Laura. Hi. Do oh. I have to put the mask up? What's wrong? Should I put the mask up? Look terrible. No, you don't need the mask. It's terrible. Oh, well, thanks. Um, I understand since this is a virtual meeting, um, some of the other clients brought up uh, Vimeo, correct? I don't know. That we could pay. Um, oh, I'm just curious. I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I'm just curious. Do you, you take putting deli meat with the gloves on? Actually, I was just coming from Subway. So thank you. For reminding me to deglove. Yeah. And how about you? I see that you're dressed to uh, host a uh, podcast about a cold case. Anyway, do you guys <laughs> think uh, Bitcoin or no? Yeah, definitely. Oh, awesome. Then we're in. Yes. We do. Go dig them up. I'm in. Here you go. Keep the change. All right. Don't forget your passwords. Got it. All right. Um, are you, are you, oh, are you okay? I guess I should be asking you if you're okay. It's um, I'll, I'll take it. It's great. The interaction. Sure. What's up? I'm doing just fine. How about yourself? Oh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm okay. You oh, know? I have another question for you. Yeah. Are we allowed to um, smoke in the virtual office here or? Absolutely. Perfect. I like this way better than the old style of therapy. I think this is way... Hey, you don't have to leave the house. Exactly. Mm. Would you... Um, I'm, I'm going to get Dr. Katz connected to you here. Thank you. Hey, oh. be safe, all right? Yeah, peace out. Sure, why not? David Tell? 
Dr. Katz, how are you? I'm good. You know. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Well, um, I tell Dr. Katz, I appreciate you uh, squeezing me in. I know it's a very uh, uh, full plate today, right? Unusually full, you know. yeah. And I know you're busy. I can tell you're dressed to, um, are you uh, giving a TED talk at a planetarium or what are you doing there? The blazer, you, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm so glad you call it a blazer because a lot of people don't know that term even. They yeah. call it a sport jacket or a... No, I like that you dressed up. Yeah, you probably went to Barney's at a certain point in your life, like around. Maybe I did, when you... but uh, I guess you're probably wondering about my outfit, correct? No, I'm wondering about whether or not you got a bar mitzvah suit at Barney's. I probably did. I really don't know. As we all know, I block out a lot of things. In yeah. fact, um, what I was going to say is, as you can tell by the way I'm dressed, I have to uh, host a uh, sea shanty on TikTok. So I hope uh, this doesn't take as long as usual. You know, I'd like to just get to it. No. I know you like to dance around. That's part of your style. You know, you like to no. bob and weave through everyone's emotions and, you know, but like maybe we can just get to it. That's the kind of times we live in. Let's just bring it. No, I now, think. I asked, I asked Laura yeah. and I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Do you want the mask up or down? What do you think? I think better down. Okay. So how about this? Mask down, teeth out, or teeth and mask down? <laughs> oh my God, that's so complicated. Dude. Um, can you smoke with your mask up? That would be tricky. Um, they're working on that. There's a lot of new things happening out there. And you don't mind if I drink, do you? Is that okay? No, no, I don't mind at all. What kind of cigarettes are those? What brand? Um, they're uh, organic, I believe, yeah. I miss, uh, this, I miss the smoke, but I miss the smell. I miss the smell of cigarette smoke. You do? From, you know, my mother died of, of uh, lung cancer. She smoked, yeah. three, she smoked three packs of camels every day for 30 years. Awesome. Died of lung cancer. Yeah. Smoked, smoked for another three months. Wow. And you know what? I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, I'm glad that you brought it up because... Uh, yeah. I have a birthday, and I know that uh, you always have this thing about birthdays. And um, I don't know if you know this now, the way we live, you're not allowed to gather a group, which is pretty fine for me because I don't really have that many friends. So in a way, it was a win-win. But what you are supposed to do is, uh, and I'm sure you've seen this, you know, um, and I don't even know, I don't even know how you get through the day, but... Um, You'll see a kid, like a, a young kid, and it's his birthday, and they have a sign that says, honk if it's my, honk, it's my birthday. And people will drive by and honk. And I was just thinking, I was like, you know what? My dad was way ahead of the game, you know? Because that's the kind of birthdays I used to have. Just basically a honk and a wave, and then, you know, he did, he did the sad. Yeah. These are sad times. Yeah. Do you miss, what do you think is harder? Staying indoors or staying in character? Oh, that's such a good question, dude. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> and? <laughs> I think staying in character is much harder because... It really is. Yeah. Either way, what I was going to ask you is there's a few things happening out there. And uh, you probably want to know how I've been getting through this, correct? Well, I noticed that you're trending on Venmo, so that can't hurt. <laughs> well, I don't want to brag, but I'm also um, hosting a gender reveal on, um, what is it again? Yeah, I believe it's, um, I believe it's in the Zoom family. I'm not exactly sure if it's the Zoom, maybe it's more of a Zoo, Zoo, uh, Z Zom or something. Might be a knockoff. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad to get the work, you know, in these times, you know. I was so confused about the term gender re reveal for a while because I thought it meant somebody was coming out. I didn't realize really? they were revealing the gender of their infant. Uh, well, you know what? I'm just going to tell you, people are taking the next step. Like you with that, I guess, jacket and shirt. I mean, it's only a matter of time till you're wearing a turtleneck. I mean, it's just, 
I'm not a psychic, but I see it in your future, a turtleneck. I don't think it can go that far. Now, um, since it was my birthday, you're probably wondering how old I am, correct? Not really. No, okay, good. Because okay. maybe that, yeah, maybe we don't need that anymore. No, Everyone's focused on this pandemic. Yeah, no, I think we should really go, we should go for it. Let's, we, like we should cut out all the polite conversation and just get right down to it. I'm totally with you, buddy. I'm totally with you. Now we're working together, we're synced up. I yeah. mean, should a cure be harder to find than HBO Max? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a doctor, you're a doctor, correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not an epidemiologist, but I'm I a doctor. No one will ever accuse you of knowing anything about dinosaur bones, but that, oh wait, that's a paleontologist. Right. Now, let me ask you this, since you are a doctor, are you a little jealous of Dr. Fauci? Because he kind of is the Logan Paul of the moment. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, everybody's a doctor, Dr. Fauci. What do you think? I, I can't accept the fact that he's not Jewish. He sounds so Jewish. A little bit, yeah. yeah. There's a little well, flip in there, that's for sure. Yeah. But um, I'm, not, I'm not jealous, no. Okay, that's good. Either way, I feel like I'm always letting you down. Now, what can I do to help? Please, let me, let me uh, you know, be a part of it. That's what I want. I want to be a part of the, the solution and not the problem. What do you think? Um, that would be great. It, it, but I, I don't think it's true that you're letting me down. I'm not. No. Okay, good. Well, I like the uh, positivity of that. That's great. Thank yeah. you. In fact, I... And I Wait, I just lost you for a second, Dave. Go ahead. Are you okay? Yeah, no, we yeah. were just, I think we were talking over each other, so it canceled out. But I think that, um, it's funny. Am I right? What's funny? Nothing. I was just, I was <laughs> thinking of something else. Now, can I, can I open up to you? Because in these times, you know, it's no longer, there's no need to hide. So I no. just open up. I used to come to you mostly not for the therapy, but to use your Wi-Fi. And now I feel I do need the therapy. So bring it. I'm all ears. I want to listen. Okay. Here's what you need to do to, to become more of who you can be. Oh, no, wait, that's, that's the motivation. I'm not, I'm not a, I wish I was a motivational speaker because they, they get the big bucks. That's for sure. Yeah, the my my mission as a therapist, yeah, is to re help to real reveal to you things about yourself that you already know. You're right, because people now are wearing the mask, so you really don't know. But I know, because luckily my mother, my dear mother, taught me to read eyebrows, and eyebrows are now the new. Yes, yeah, see, I could tell. Yeah. You're, you're like a little surprised. That's what I could tell by that read. Yeah. And that now eyebrows are the only emotional trigger that we're getting from people. Think about sure. it. Yeah. May yeah. I? Please. If you would have made such a great dad and it's not too late. You don't think so? No. Well, I think I froze my sperm. I'm not exactly sure what they did with it, but um, yeah, maybe I could. I would love that. I think that would be great. And tell me if I'm asking asking you something that's actually none of my business because that has happened on occasion. Sure. Are you are you quarantining alone, or is is there a, do you have a pardon the expression a partner in life? Um. Well, as you know, that I uh, like to keep distance. You know, I. Uh, in my house growing up, we had a rule, you have to be uh, six feet emotionally distant from each other. So I'm kind of used to this loner experience. So the answer is yes, I'm quar quarantining alone. Yes, I'm quarantining alone. And um, all I can say is, uh, you know, there are highs and lows to that. You know, there's good and bad to everything. And there, um, the quarantining alone, um, thing is great because sometimes what I like to do is just curl up in my bed 
next to a pile of half written screenplays that I've started during the pandemic and um, you know my projects and hobbies and whatnot. Do, do some of the, do you use the expression fade in? Fade in? Yeah, Is this in, drug terminology? Are you talking about being faded? No, no, I'm talking about when you're writing a screenplay. Oh, right, fade in. Yeah. Cut to. Yeah, I like yeah. that. That's the yeah. thing. That's the thing that things I like about screenplays. You know what Otherwise, happens if you start writing and I'm like, you really getting at it. And then I just go, um, you know what? I just want to, uh, I'm hungry. And then I'll just go eat something. And then like, I'll, I'll forget about it. If you, my advice to you about writing is to find yeah. someone who, who is good to collaborate with. And I know it's hard now. And also somebody with a wonderful work ethic. Perfect. And you know what? I think I would be a great guy in a writing team because look, I have a printer. Not many people have a printer. I have one. Great. Right. Right. I'm, like, to... I'm like one printer away from being my own Kinko's. I mean, honestly. <laughs> Surprise! There's not a line of people waiting to make copies right here. Yeah. Um, what am I drinking? Is that what you wanted to know? Yeah. I like to um, end the day with a big glass of hydrochloroquine, and um, mm, that really kills the tickle in the throat. Yeah, join me. Let's cheers it up. Mm. There you go. For your mental health. Exactly. Now, what do you think uh, about getting a pet? Maybe that's the way to go for me. I was just going to recommend that. Really? No. What would you say? You're not going to like this idea, but I would recommend, I can see you with a lizard. A lizard. I think we talked many, many years ago yeah. about having a lizard as a pet. Because uh, when you have a lizard as a pet, not the most emotionally fulfilling pet, in fact, for anybody who wants to have a lizard as a pet, you should just go and draw eyes on a shoe and talk to it, because that's pretty much the same reaction you're going to get. Yeah. Nice setup. Uh, what was I going to say? You know, it's so painful to tell jokes sometimes. I think, I think that's the best way to fight this thing, with jokes, with no reaction. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Now, dogs are out there. Dogs, I've never seen them more involved in our lives. And my neighbor's dog is a very, one of these little tiny dogs. He's very metro. He's a metro dog. And, you know, he's so metro that, like, he doesn't even bark like a regular dog. He just growls. You know that, like, very condescending, that, like, oh, yeah. eh, eh. you know that, eh. you know it? Yeah. <laughs> and I never know, I never know, Dr. Kett, I never know if he's angry or just trying to speak Hebrew. So I don't know what to say. I would say shalom. <laughs> but um, no, that's such an unusual sound for a dog. I, I, I lost a dog of 17 oh. years recently. Really? Yeah. That's a long time for a dog. In fact, his ashes are about three feet away from me right now. Wow. Um, Dr. Katz, you really are, uh, you know, I never I never really thought you as a man. I thought you more as a cyborg of just helpful info. But I see you also have some loss in your life. Oh, yeah. And what do you, exactly. what, what do you think? Are you going to get another dog or what are you going to do? Because even though I lost the dog, I regained the respect of my wife who's allergic to dogs. Wow. Now that's that is, really, that's tough in a relationship. Yeah. Allergic there's to dogs. There's no such thing as hypo Already? <laughs> wow. I call do-overs. I say, you know, if I'm doing the check bot on a virtual therapy show, I should get a couple more minutes. Dave, we're going to have to stop. I'm so sorry. Oh, I thought we stopped. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> I'll, see you. I'll see you soon. Hey, be safe. Thanks for having me. You too. Take care. Dr. Katz? Yes. Um, your 530 is here, and it's Ben. God, I hate to do this to him. Can you tell him I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm done for the day? I just I can see you. What's that? I said I, I think can... we can see you. 
Hello. Hey, Dan. Ben. Hey, Laura. Hi. I, I think, yeah. I think, as much as I love you both, I think I gotta quit because this is a long day for me. You know, it's a very long day. Hasn't first it? of all, first of all, I'm not wearing a watch. I want to point that out. How's your wrist? Is it? Yeah. You tell time by the arm hair. Yeah. Yeah. So no session, I guess that's fine. I think you know if you're good. I mean, uh, was there something else we needed to talk about then? I, I hope that's not how you treat your other patients. I mean, if you're good. No, you know, some of the, some of the sessions today was so disturbing. I think I, I kind of need to cleanse myself. All right, well, tell me later, like you always do. Okay. I'll I mean, the, I'll the I, mean I, know that, I know that's not, you know, you're not supposed to do that, but. No, the, I, I do therapy to help people and for your entertainment. <laughs> I, I have always appreciated that. Yeah. Um, so please take care of yourself in these dangerous times. <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking about somewhere between uh, 9 and 10 o'clock East Coast. Time. Aren't you guys in the same house right now? No. No. I... I uh... I got my own place. Really? Up, right upstairs. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, he lent me the attic. A lot of separation. It's good. Separation's good. Yeah, because I have my own, you know. Yeah. Style. Exactly. It's good to be ben, separate. Yeah, Ben's place is amazing. Yeah. Awesome. All you got to do is pull down the ladder and get up to me if you ever want to come visit. Wow. Okay. Good yeah. Time. Yeah. You just go to my dad's and pull down the ladder okay. and you come up and visit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've never been a big ladder person. Well, you knock on my dad's door. Yeah, I get it. You come up the stairs. And I got it. Pull down the ladder. You'll see that yeah. there's a cut cutout in the ceiling. It's in the. It's, it's basically an attic. So pull the ladder down. Don't even worry about knocking. I'm once you pull down the ladder, and there you are. Well, I hear that. So that's basically the right. the knock that I would if there was a door, but you could not knock physically. Is there it's a bathroom up there? To, what's that? Is there a bathroom up there? Hey, my motto is, in my place, there's always a pot to piss in. Okay, I gotta go. Right. Bye. 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 Bye, Dad. Bye. See you, Ben. See you, Laura. Hey, Laura. Yeah? I'm going to be in a little late. Tomorrow morning? Oh, me too. Well, I, I, I have to go to a funeral. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Katz. Yeah, well, thank you. And it's, it's going to be a tough one because, you know, this is, a, this is my third funeral this year, and I'm, I'm not a mourning person. Is that a joke? Uh, yeah. Why, didn't it seem I don't seem think like... that's appropriate at a Did time it... like this. Do you think it's a bad joke or just an appropriate time for a joke? Both. You can only choose one. I'd have to go with bad joke. That hurts. So now what, what exactly are you going to say? I was going to ask you. I was, you know, usually try to open with a joke. <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to today. No. I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about Estelle, you know? Yeah, well, that would be a good person to talk about. <laughs> yeah, because it is for a funeral. That's true. I got to okay. acknowledge her somehow. Uh, yeah, I would say touch on her. Hey, Ben, isn't that Cousin Sheila's husband, Larry? You remember him? That's the guy that used to put on the magic shows at the, at the family gatherings. Right. 
and he'd make me be his lovely assistant, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I hope he doesn't try to saw the casket in <laughs> Dad, don't make us laugh. Okay. That's not right. Not here. Oh, man. This is, a, this is a depressing event here. I don't care what anyone says. And I haven't even done my eulogy yet. Oh, I think, I think this, uh, they're, uh, 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 they're asking me up to the... Yeah, to you're going to have to go up you. now. I'll stay here. Mm. Unless you want me to be your lovely assistant. Nah, that's all right. All right, you go up. Knock him dead. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> when I uh, when I first heard that Estelle had uh, <clears throat> when I first heard that Estelle had passed away, can't hear him back. Ben, if you can't if you can't hear me, come a little closer. I'm sorry, folks. When I first. Uh, <laughs> No, I, th I thought of, when I first heard that she had passed away, I thought of her life, and, uh, you know, Estelle had 92 great years, and by my count, that's, that's 92 great years. I'm sorry, I lost my place here. I remember her love and her laughter, and her love of laughter. Mayday, mayday. <clears throat> Estelle was a uh, was a remarkable woman. She, in her lifetime, she accomplished so much uh, and did so much for so many people in her ninety two years. Which, if you break it down, it's really it's not that much considering how long she lived. But still, wrap it up. She she did a lot. Uh, <clears throat> I know what the music means. Hello. Mandy? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me All okay? Right. I can, I can. You have some questions from the audience. Are you ready to answer a few? Yeah, sure. All right. So the first one is, are there any plans for future live streams? Yes. Okay. <laughs> wait, um, you know, <laughs> wait, maybe, maybe I should add one phrase. And we're hoping to get more contemporary comedians. Love it. Um, do you have any plans to record more audio files or any other podcasts? I continue working on my podcast, Hey, We're Back. Awesome. And um, did Ben ever end up getting a job? You know... Uh, that's kind of a, a personal question. I think that's something you need to, to ask him directly. Yeah. I mean, no. he kind of hinted that he, <laughs> he's a, a struggling artist. Um, yeah, in that's your, true. So uh, uh, professional advice, how would you recommend getting through this pandemic unscathed? Uh, I, would, I would take all the advice given to you by the, the take all the advice follow the science you know it, it uh get a bunsen burner um <laughs> and uh set up your own little lab at home and follow the science oh lord it used to be so funny <laughs> um our episodes uh, old episodes of Dr. Cats available on any streaming services? I don't know if you know the answer to that. I, no, I think the answer is no. I do believe that you can watch them on YouTube as well as Comedy Central sometimes at like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, they're available on YouTube and, and occasionally on Comedy Central like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've heard. Here's I've heard. <laughs> I've heard that too. Crazy. Is there a performer that you wanted on your show that you never got? Bob Newhart one. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Carson would have been fun. I, I don't know if he died before my show began. I think he was still alive. Um, he just missed out. <laughs> but uh, 
No, I had a similar approach. This is too long an answer, but um, I'm trying to think of who else. And my favorite comedian of all time was the late great Ronnie Shakes. And then moving up to current day, which comedians that are popular now would you have on the show if the show was done today? I would have to start with the late great Ronnie Shakes. No, no. Um, <laughs> Today, I, I can't be fun to have guys like, um, is it Bo Burnham? Is that how you pronounce his name? Yeah, Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham, the star of a movie called um, The Big Sick, whose name I can't pronounce. Mm -hmm. um, Parna. Do you know who she is? Aparna is her first name, I think, an Indian woman. I personally do not. There's so many young comedians who are wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I'm not one of them. Young at heart. I'm, yeah. <laughs> uh, was the show, or, uh, original show, mostly improv and then cut down for the best jokes? No, it was it was actually cut down for the best performance. It was very driven by performance. Uh, the, the the written version of the show. Uh, every once in a while, I would write a great joke for an episode, and I'd see it was gone by the time we edited the episode, and that's because mm -hmm. the performer, performance was stronger than the joke. There you go. Uh, these are two comments, Dr. Katz, you inspired me 10 years and counting as a clinical psych. And thank you. I'm a therapist. Grew up watching this show. This was lovely. How much of what was said? Oh, never mind. You kind of just answered that question. So sorry. What are you working on right now? You know what? I haven't really thought about it. It's silly but it's true it seems like all i have is time but i haven't given that much thought as, as to a big project anyway mm -hmm. a lot of people are asking for more um audio content and podcasts so i just want to make sure everyone knows that uh dr katz does have the audio files on audible as well as your podcast of hey we're back and also on audible is something called dr katz the audiobook mm -hmm. uh, but hey Hey, we're back. It was really a wonderful place to start. They're very short episodes, and there are, I think, 43 of them. And they're just sort of very whims whimsical. They, you don't want to write this much. Uh, people are asking if they can make suggestions for guests, if there's any way to submit uh, people they'd love to see. Yeah, I'd love to hear your, their ideas. Is there a way they can reach out? Uh, DM can, me on Instagram. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they, can, they can email me at jonathan at jonathancats.com. That's my public address. Okay. Uh, where, someone's asking, where is that blue teleporter in the back taking Dr. Katz to when he's done here? It does look you, like you have well, uh the he blue wall the has some blue weird blue lighting blue. happening. Yes. Yeah. That's that just be the reflection of these. Well, it's not a serious question, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say no. The answer. Is. <laughs> uh, people ask if you check the Doctor Cat hashtags on social media. I I'm gonna jump in as your daughter and say, since I run your social media platforms, yes, I do show him things that are tagged for him on social media but he's not the best. What was the last dream that you had, Dr. Katz? Oh, see, it was so sad. <laughs> I had a very sad dream. Do you want to share it? <laughs> okay. What about your second to last dream? Was it any oh, happier? Great. Great. Oh, lovely. You know, I would say I rarely have a, a sad dream, but most of my dreams involve technology and uh, um, mountain climbing. Perfect, perfect pair. I, uh, was I, I'm sorry, go ahead and ask. Uh, uh, was Comedy Central the first place you pitched the show? Yes. 
Amazing. First and only. Do you have any interest in performing as a hologram? What does it pay? Millions of dollars. No, is that true, really? No, I really just made that up. I have no idea. I don't know anything. <laughs> Uh, someone said, can you say hello to my girlfriend, Stephanie? It's our official first date, first official date. I'm dyslexic. Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> Be careful. Wow, sound more menacing. Uh, okay. Would you rather be an artichoke or a, a unicorn? I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. A unicorn? Uh, perhaps. Let's keep on moving. Where did you get your therapist training? I'm, I'm not a therapist. I'm a comedian. Because <laughs> there are people who think of a therapist, you know. People are saying your voice is so soothing and brings so much nost nostalgia. Thank you. Dr. Katz, my mother won't call me back. What should I do? Um... I would send her a telegram. Carrier pigeon? What happened no. to your online show, Explosion Bus? That still looks, I think it's still online. And that wasn't my show, that was Tom Snyder's show. Um, will there ever be a return to home movies? Of my character, I don't think the show is still in production. Um, maybe that's a, again something I didn't pr create or produce. That was the work of Lauren Bouchard and Brendan Small, mm -hmm. and, and Tom Snyder, I think. Um, what made you choose to use Squiggle Vision? Did any other shows use it? Well, I had tried Squiggle Vision and Squiggle Vision. And uh, those didn't work as well. So we, we settled on squiggle vision. Lots of people are commenting on your blazer. Uh, where is it from? Do you love the color? Blue is a great color for you. I actually got it Mr. Sid's in Newton Center, which is owned by Jason Siegel's uncle or grandfather. He's my only connection to show business at this point. <laughs> Uh, do you still play guitar? I play lap seal now. Want to explain what that is? Lap seal, you know, lap seal is the, in is the instrument you play on your lap and you pick with your right hand, with your right hand and with your, in my left hand I have a slide. Which episode was your personal favorite? Mask. Um, I like your bookshelf. Cast is a great book. Mm. How, how is it spelled, Cast? C-A-S-T-E? Mm -hmm. I think it's right behind you, too, on the bookshelf. In the, in the computer. What would uh, be your advice to aspiring and up-and-coming comedians? Um... First, you put your two knees to. Uh, first, you put your two knees together. No. Um, write, write jokes, and even if you can't write jokes, get on stage and get on stage as soon as you can. Get over being on stage. Do you still do stand-up shows? Occasionally. I'll do a stand-up show at the comedy for the comedy studio now virtually, but and that's in Cambridge. Oh no, actually it's in uh, in Somerville now. Dad, people want us to go into business together. I'm assuming they mean me and not your other daughter. I would love a podcast where your daughter asks you various questions. We could turn this into a podcast, Dad. You think what I'm thinking? Oh yeah, let's make that money. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> what have you been watching during quarantine? TV, movies, or listening to podcast music or reading? I've been reading a 
I actually been listening to a book written by, by um, called, oh shit, what's the name of the book? <laughs> Gotta find out the name. It's not right. Oh, the name of the book. Something machines. Uh, one second. Sensation Machines by Adam Wilson. Great book, great plug. How do you feel about medical marijuana? Uh, Asking for a friend. I'm not, I'm not big on it. Sounds too... What about recreational? Better. <laughs> do you think that there are certain topics that shouldn't be joked about? No, I don't, honestly. Out of all of the comedians you've had, which one is the most in need of therapy? I would have to say Dom Irera. I'm sure a lot of people tonight might agree with you. Uh, sorry, someone just asked, did anyone catch the email he mentioned earlier? Just to say it again, it's Jonathan at JonathanCats.com. What were your impressions of the episode you did with Mitch Hedberg? They were, um, he was amazing. I'm not sure I realized it at the time, just how original he was. Because mm -hmm. he died shortly after. I think he recorded once and we turned it into a couple of episodes. But it's just been recording. Are there any plans for a Dr. Katz movie? Okay. <laughs> um, no, it's it's certainly it's a great idea. It might have this may not be the right time for it, but it's a, such a wonderful idea. Have you always lived in Massachusetts? No, I grew up in New York City. When is Cats and Jammers doing a reunion tour? Uh, as soon as, as soon as I can find the, the other members. Of <laughs> it's just her voice. You and Ben have such an amazing chemistry. For how long did you know Ben before the show? Dad, people can see you, though. They can and see me. Okay. And talking to mom. They can see you. They can see you talking to mom. Oh, but but you're you're uh, you're not on screen, are you? Sweetie? No. For how long did you know Ben before you guys did the show? I only knew him. I knew him only briefly before the we started the show. He was working for Cross Comedy with David Cross. He was part of a comedy troupe when we met, and he was living with Laura Silverman. Hey. Whoa. Do you still? Remember the first few lines of your Havtora? Can you recite them? Um, so the answer is no. Yeah, I'm going to say no. <laughs> Would you ever go on tour with a live version of the show once it's safer? Oh, we've been doing that for years. We've been doing Dr. Cats Live at comedy festivals all over the country. Would you ever join Cameo? No, Maddie. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for this. Sincerely, it's lovely to hear these familiar voices and see that there are so many fans on here. We hit about 700 people in the chat. Lots of people. Super excited. How long have you been working with H. John Benjamin? Well, since, you know, for maybe 25 years. Yeah. Um, hey, Mandy, we, we should just take maybe three more questions. How about that? Totally. How about a Dr. Katz musical? Oh, I know three people who would love that. Can you name them? <laughs> Me, <laughs> Tom Snyder, and Laura Silverman. Uh, was Ben's character inspired by anyone? How much of your Dr. Katz character is based on you and your real life stories? I can't really. No, no. Um, 
how much of Dr. Katz is based on me and my real life stories? A lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, would you consider being Bob Belcher's therapist from Bob's Burgers? Yeah, yes, I, I would, but I haven't had the offer yet. It's a good <laughs> idea. Okay, and I'll say our final question of the evening is what is your favorite self-care thing? Oh, um... I think it's it's meditation. I haven't, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Sounds good. I mean, you got more of the pandemic to try it out. Thanks so much for, for helping out. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>